Hi, welcome once again to Coastwide Church Victory Bible Studies. Remember these words from the book of Romans, chapter 10, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I really believe that faith is going to continue to grow in your heart tonight. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you once again for your Word. We believe right now, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, your Word is going to come forth as revelation that it's going to encourage, it's going to build up, it's going to strengthen your people, that they're going to see that the foundation of their life is a good foundation and that the building that you're building on top of, the, of their lives can be a great, great place. And so, Father, we thank you for it. We pray that people will just not hear my words tonight, but will hear your words in mine. And I give you the praise, I give you the honour and the glory for it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So last week, last Tuesday night, I spent time with you just sharing with you about how God wants to build our lives. And I took much, much time in making sure that the foundation to our life, Jesus Christ, was the foundation to our life. I shared with you that I had come from the construction industry and uh, I realized that it is so important to have a really good, solid foundation because the foundation, it is going to be the thing that determines the building that comes on top of it. If you put in a very shallow, very small foundation, then you can only put a lightweight building on top of that. But if you want to build a strong, great house in the things of God, then you have to allow your foundation to be strong and deep as well. And Jesus, He is that foundation to our life. There's no other foundation. We read that last uh, Tuesday night, that there is no other foundation that any man can lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. No other foundation, no denomination. No church, you can't build a foundation on a pastor, you can't build a foundation on, on anything else but Jesus. You might have come into the church because you got healed. That's wonderful. But the truth is you can't build a life on healing. You must build a life on the healer who is Jesus. So important. You may be going to church because, well, all your family have gone to church for years and years and years. Grandma and granddad might have brought you. Mum and dad may have brought you. A brother or sister may have brought you. And that's commendable to be going to church. But the truth is, you can't build your life on a church. You must build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only true foundation for this house this life that ours that God calls a house or a building that he wants in our lives. So again, in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 11, we said this, there was no other foundation than Jesus Christ. Let me read to you from the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verses 13 through to 18. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is saying, not to Peter, he's not saying to Peter, Peter, upon you I'm going to build my church. Oh no, no friend. There are people and churches who think that, but that's not correct. They've misinterpreted what the Word of God is saying here. He's saying, Peter, you are a little pebble. 
You're a small rock. But on the truth of this revelation that you just said, on that big rock, I am going to build my church. We personally and corporately are the church. And so he's saying, I'm going to build the church. I'm going to build my church corporately and individually on the revelation that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's not on Peter. Peter is just a small pebble, a small rock. But on this revelation that came from the supernatural realm of God, that that revelation that the Father spoke into the spirit of Peter and then Peter spoke out his mouth, you are the Christ. You're the anointed one of God, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, on that revelation, that revelation is what I'm going to build the church. I'm going to build our life, my life, your life, on that revelation that He is the Christ. The Bible is very clear that Jesus is our foundation stone. And then He says this, but the teachings of the apostle and the prophets must be laid down on top of this. So He's saying that we take the Word of God, this Word that was inspired Inspired by God, written by men under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We then take this word and we build on top of the foundation of Christ with this word. How do you do that? Well, there's this wonderful scripture in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. And in that scripture, Jesus says these words. He says, forgive everyone of everything. That was written by the Apostle Paul, inspired, uh, my apologies, that was said by Jesus, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is saying to you and I, forgive everyone of everything. So if Christ is our foundation, then the building on top of that is forgive everyone of everything. And as we choose to do that, and as we apply that to our lives, then our life is getting built. We're becoming mature. We're giving God honour and glory when we forgive everyone of everything instead of holding a grudge or being bitter towards someone in some way. That's how we build on the foundation. Another way to build. You read in the Word of God that He tells us to love one another. And so when we choose to start to love one another, we're building on that foundation. We're building on Christ put His love in us by the Holy Spirit, Romans chapter 5 and I think verse 8 says, that that He poured out the love of God in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And so that love is in us. And every time we're using and every time we're, we're releasing that love of God, our house is being built stronger and stronger and stronger in the things of God. So what did Jesus say about our personal foundation, our base or our starting point? Let me read to you from Luke chapter 6, Verses 47 to 49. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So let's look at these verses of Scripture. This is the parable 
of two houses. So Jesus is saying, here's two houses. This one was built on a rock foundation. This one had no foundation. It was just built right on top of the earth. Both of them had problems and pressures and circumstances of life come upon them. One stood and one fell down. And so he's describing this parable to us about our lives. He's saying if our life is built on a rock who is Jesus, we'll stand against the pressures of life. No matter what life throws against you, you'll stand because you're built on a firm foundation. But if your life is not built on a firm foundation, then friend, when life throws its storms against you, you might collapse. You might fall over from the pressure that comes against it. Let's look at these verses. So what is constituting a sound life? Well, he says, whoever comes to me. There it is again. The important facet that we must come to Jesus. I believe that is the most important thing ever, that we need to come to him. Not just when we are born again, but we need to come to Jesus consistently and continuously in our lives. Then he says, and here's my sayings. We need to hear what Jesus is saying to us. The very best way to be able to hear Jesus' sayings is to go to his word and to read the sayings of Jesus, to read those things that are in the red that Jesus Christ has said to us. Read them. Meditate on them. Feed them into your spirit, man. Because the words of Jesus, this word of God, is food for your spirit. Just like if you go and have a hamburger, that will feed your physical man. If you go and have a feed of God's word, it will feed your spirit man. So he says, here's my sayings, but, but not just hears them. And this is such an important key. We do them. We don't just hear, ah, oh, the Bible says that we are to forgive everyone of everything. That's great to hear that. But then you've got to do it. You've got to make a conscious decision that I'm going to do that. That's how our house is built. That's how we become mature. That's how we become stronger in God, by doing the Word of God. He then says this, that you can hear and not do. For in verse uh, 46, we didn't read verse 46, but in verse 46 of Luke 6, he's saying, you call me Lord, Lord. He's saying, you're calling me Lord. You're saying all of the right things. But listen but you do not do the things I say. You, you don't do the things that I say. Oh, Lord, Lord, we love you and appreciate you, but I'm not going to forgive that person. I'm not going to love that person. God, you, you know what they did to me. God, you know what they said to me. But God says it doesn't matter what they did to you nor said to you. If you want your house to grow strong and be built that stands against the pressures of life, then do my word. Hear and do the word. Not like these ones. You do not do the things I say. See, this is knowing the word and not doing it. People can know the word. They can know that the word of God says, forgive everyone of everything. Ah, I, uh, I know that, but I'm not going to do it. Because they were really terrible to me, really horrible to me. So I'm not going to do that. Then you're building a life on earth. You're not building on Jesus Christ. You're hearing, but you're not prepared to do. And that goes totally against the word of God. That means that you're going to try to build a house, but you're not allowing God to build that house. Because if you were allowing God to build your house, you would forgive everyone of everything. 
There would just not, you, there, there would not be a decision because you made a decision years ago, I'm going to forgive everyone of everything. And because I made that decision, then I've already made the decision. Doesn't matter what you say or do to me, I've decided to forgive you a long time before you even hurt me. Friend, that is a powerful, powerful way to live. I made a decision a long time ago. I'm just going to forgive everyone of everything. And that's it. Doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. I forgive. And I do my best to live by that every day. So what is a man like who hears and does the word of God? Well, he says this in, in Luke chapter 6. He says, he's like a man which built a house. He dug deep and he laid the foundation on a rock. Listen to it again. He's like a man which built a house. So this man was really interested in having a life of maturity, having a life that of, of blessing and honour to God. He was really interested in that. So what did he do? He dug deep. He didn't do just a shallow foundation, but he allowed the Spirit of God to dig deep down into his life and get out all of those issues, those sins, those, those things in our lives that want to hinder us from walking powerfully with our God. He took time to allow the Spirit of God to dig deep down so that we could have a rock-solid foundation of Jesus Christ. And then it says this, he laid the foundation on a rock. I remember back in my uh, days of construction that there was a certain place in the city that we lived in. And you knew that if you're going to build a house there, you are going to come and find rock. You dig down a little way and you're going to find big rocks. And so if you, you knew that, you would have the engineer would design a foundation with the rock in there. You, you couldn't move the rock. The rock was part of the, the mountain that the houses were going to be built on. And so the engineer would design a, a foundation. They would drill into that rock and have have a, a reinforcement bars come out and they would tie the foundation of the house into that rock because they knew that rock was solid and that rock was not going to go anywhere. And so they would spend time redesigning and making sure that it was tied to the rock. Listen to that. It was tied to the rock and it was built in to the rock. The rock was not built into the foundation. The foundation was built into the rock. Who is that rock in our lives? That rock is Jesus Christ. He's the rock, the foundation to our lives. And so why? Why must the house be built on a rock? I'm glad you asked that question. Let me answer it. Because the floods of life will rise. The streams of life will beat vehemently. Notice that word, it will beat vehemently upon that house. Life can be stormy. Life can throw up pressures and storms against our lives. And the storms of life, they come against everyone, a believer or an unbeliever. But it's what our life is built on, whether we'll stand or not. Financial pressures, relationship pressures, work pressures, just uh, uh, health pressures. All of these kinds of pressures can come against you. This COVID-19 pressure in life at the moment, they, they come upon you. But if your foundation is Jesus Christ, then you'll go through those pressures and you will defeat those things and your life will continue to stand strong like a rock. It won't matter what comes against you because your foundation in Christ is rock solid. 
because what you'll be doing is you'll be looking to him. When the pressure comes, you won't be looking to the government or to the world or anything else. You'll be looking to Jesus. You'll be focused on Jesus and he will always, always give you a way of escape out of those pressures that come. Hallelujah. What happened to the house on the rock? Well, according to the Bible in Luke chapter 6, it says the storm could not shake it. Could not shake it. The pressures, the circumstances, the storms of life that were battering against your life could not shake it. You were rock solid. Through this COVID thing, we've not been shaken through it one little bit. We've stood on Christ, the solid rock to our foundation. Why could it not be shaken? I told you, it was founded on a rock. See, if you're hearing the word and you're doing the word on a solid foundation of Christ, then friends, it won't matter what happens. It won't matter the financial pressures, the health pressures, the family pressures that come against you. It really won't matter because you're solid in Christ. And he's always, I have always found Jesus to have an answer to get us out of these circumstances of life. Yeah. But what is the danger in building our lives? You've got to hear and not do. If you hear and not do, the Bible consistently talking about hear and doing. Hearing it, doing it. Hearing it builds faith. Doing it brings manifestation. Hearing it brings faith. Doing it brings manifestation. It says that if we hear and we don't do, we're a man without a foundation and we're building upon earth. You can build a multi-million dollar house just on dirt. But I want to tell you from experience, it will collapse. It will collapse. The earth will shake a bit. A storm will come. Rain will come. Winds will come. And that house is going to fall. There's just no way that it can stand because it has no foundation. Because the foundation is the most important part of the dwelling. It tells us what kind of dwelling you're going to have on that. So what happens to the house without a foundation? The stream belt beat vehemently against it. It's the same storm. It's not a different storm that is coming against the believer and the unbeliever. It's the same storm, not a different one coming against it. And the Bible says this, that immediately it fell. How quick is immediately? Immediately is already gone. That fast. It was fast. I have seen in my life as a Christian, people can come into church and and do all the right things, sing the right song, lift their hands at the right time, pray at the right time, but their foundation was not Christ. And, and suddenly a health issue or a financial issue came against them. And what happened? Immediately, within moments, I'm not going back to church. I'm not doing this Christian thing anymore. It's just too hard or, it's, or it just doesn't work for me or, or all of these issues. And immediately, their life in God stops. And they fall over. Don't be like that. Oh, I plead with you today. Don't be like that. Allow Christ to be the foundation of your life and then build on his word and become strong, a strong house in God. And then it says this, and the ruin of that house was great. The ruin of that house was great. Don't be one who can do all the right things, 
but you're not right in here. Your heart is not right with Jesus Christ. You've not allowed the Spirit of God to dig out the stuff in your life that have been displeasing to Him in any way. Allow God to be the very foundation of your life so that your life being built up will not become one that it says the ruin of that house was great. You know, I found this as I finish tonight. I found that there are a lot of people who watch us. There are a lot of people who watch your life. You've told them you're a Christian and all that sort of thing, and they're watching your life to see whether you're real or not. And what happens if you suddenly walk away from God and, and, and your, your life falls over because you've never really built on Christ? The ruin of that house becomes great. It ruins other people as well. So it really is a strong truth for you and I to build on Christ, to allow the Word of God to build a great building, a great house on top of the foundation of Christ, so that we can continually touch people's lives. They can look at you and go, wow, I, I saw you went through that storm of life and you're still standing. Tell me how. Tell me what you did to be able to get through that because I'm going through some storms in my own life and I really need help. I hope last uh, Tuesday night and, and tonight has been an encouragement and has been a blessing to you to realize that God wants to build something wonderful of your life. But it must be built, truly built, on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. That is so, so very important. Well, friend, next Tuesday and Thursday night, we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to about talk about prayer is simply talking with God, communing with Him. Prayer is not a one-sided thing. It's not a monologue, but it should be a dialogue that we can talk to God and allow God to speak to us. But that's next Tuesday and Thursday night. I really hope you don't miss it because I believe God is going to say some great, great things to us. Let's pray. Father, I pray once again and I release my faith over all of our partners, our friends, and all of those who are watching these broadcasts. I, I believe tonight that God, you are able to build a great house in their life, that they're people whose foundation is Christ and that they're building on hearing and doing what the Word of God has to say. And so that whatever storms of life, whatever pressures of life, whatever circumstances of life come, come and crash against the, their house, they're going to stay strong. They're going to be one who do not fall, but they stay strong through it. And they're going to be a great testimony to other people. Many, many others are going to hear of what God has done for them and want to know this God who can take us through every storm of life without even getting wet, without even being windblown in any way. And I thank you for it. I bless, I bless all of our partners and friends right now. Let them have the rest of this week to be the greatest week of their lives. Father, I thank you for it. I bless them. I honor them in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So remember these words from the book of Corinthians that we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. We love you so much. And uh, just trust that you're going to have a great night the rest of your night. God bless you. See you next week.